Welcome back. Today we're continuing to look at the Capex 120 and the laser setup. But first, here's the jingle. So just using a scrap piece of wood, if I turn the lasers on, you can hopefully see there's two dotted lines. There's one here and there's one here. I'll just turn the main shop lights off for one second so you can see that more clearly. So there's one line here and there's one line here on this side. And the idea goes that the gap between the two dotted lines is where the saw cut will actually happen. However, that doesn't come calibrated out of the box. Well, it does, but it's one of those adjustments that you adjust to suit your own needs. And if you remember the two and a half millimeter wrench that most people lose in the packaging, that's the one that we need to adjust these lasers. So there are three adjustments for each of that. So three adjustments for the left hand laser, three adjustments for the right hand laser. So the first one is the tilt adjustment, and that's used to ensure that the laser is parallel to the saw cut. The second one is the lateral adjustment, and that shows where the actual position of the blade is going to cut. So this could cut on the outside of the blade, or it could cut further away, and that's one of those personal choices that you have to made, make. And the final one is the yaw, and that's to ensure that as you raise and lower the blade, the line stays parallel to the cut. So with a flat board clamped in position on both sides, I don't want this to move, we're just gonna go ahead and make a shallow cut on the board. So hopefully you can see now that the lasers are in the wrong position. This is the cut that we've made and at the back here my lasers are bang on the edge. The left hand one is pretty parallel but it's about a millimetre away from the edge of the cut. So I'm going to adjust these now to bring those lasers to where I want them to be. So job one is I'm going to adjust the yaw setting which is this one here for the left laser and this one here for the right laser to make sure that these lasers are parallel to the cut. I'm adjusting the left one first. Can you see that changing? So I've now deliberately taken out of alignment you can see that this laser is shooting off well away from the cut. So I just want to turn this now so that comes in and is parallel to that cut. And I'm looking at the marker towards the back and a marker towards the front to make sure that the distance from that to the edge of the cut is the same. And that looks good to me. I'm now going to go ahead and do exactly the same with the right one. And though that's inside the cut I still want it to be parallel to the cut. I don't care about the position at this moment in time. And that's there. With the laser now parallel to the edge, I want to adjust the position of the laser so it signifies the outside edges of the blade, i.e. the outside edges of the cut. So using the power release only, I bring this down so it's just about resting on the board. And then I use the lateral adjuster, which is this bottom one here for the right, and this bottom one here for the left, to bring that laser up to the edge of the kerf, i.e. the cut we've just made. And that's that one done. And that's that one done. And then release the blade. So now we've made sure that the lasers are parallel to the edge of the cut and we've made sure that in the cut position, i.e. the blade touching the surface, these are signifying the, the outside of the cut. The final thing to do is just the tilt, so when this is in the raised position, these lasers are still touching that same position, i.e. the edge of the cut. Your tilt is this left hand screw here for the left hand laser and this left hand screw for the right hand laser. And we just want to adjust that now to make sure that this lasers are on the edge of that cut. And that's good there. And similarly, that this right one, sorry, the left one is also on the edge of that cut. And with that, the lasers are now 
calibrated. At this point you have a choice to make. You can now use the lateral adjusters to move this laser closer to or further away from the edge of the cut. Personally, I want the edge of this laser to signify the outside edge of the blade. So I know that this one here is this edge of the kerf, this one here is this edge of the kerf. So that's the position I want it to be in. You may want the laser to actually split the kerf. So if you're marking out a piece of material and using a pencil, then ideally if you want your saw cut to cut halfway through that pencil, then having that laser lined up to your pencil line is the right thing to do. And to adjust that, you're just using the lateral adjusters, which are the ones at the bottom. So if I just adjust the left one to show you, I can now move this laser out, or that's this one here moving, I can move this laser out, or I can move this laser in. And if I move it in, I've now got the laser splitting the kerf. If I move it out a little bit, I've got the laser right on the edge of the cut. And that's exactly where I want it to be. And now I've got this laser perfectly aligned, so every time I do a cut, I know that the laser signifies the outside of the cut or the gap between the two lasers is the actual cut itself. And as long as if I remember how that's how I've set my capex up, then I should get a lot of accuracy out of this cut. You can also adjust the calibration of the bevel cut and the calibration of the mitre cut. Now that does come factory calibrated. The lasers obviously can move during transit, so that's something we need to maintain and watch. And also the position of the lasers is personal choice. The bevel cut and the mitre cut are preset and configured in the factory, so they come pretty much bang on. And the tests I've done on this show that that's the case. You can adjust that. And what Festool is saying is, as part of your maintenance routine, check that frequently. And especially if you've not locked this down for transportation, it can get knocked, it can get banged, the calibration can, can adjust. So there's some adjustments around for that. And in the manual I've advised you to download from the, uh, uh, from the Festool website, it talks you through that. I don't want to mess with this, because that's perfectly set up, so I'm going to leave well alone. Down the line, if I get to the point where I'm calibrating it, we'll do a video and add to the series. But for now, my Capex is set up. A few more features we want to talk about. These side fences are slidable, so we can adjust these back in two, and that's really useful. So if we were going to move this down for a bevel cut in this direction, you can see the fence could foul this. So that's giving me a maximum cut of 33 degrees, so that's fouling it. So you can take these, um, you can drop these fences out as you'd expect and the same on that side there. There's a dust collector here, this rubber cowling thing here is for collecting dust. Obviously as the blade spins, it flicks chips into here and then your extractor takes it away. There's a lot of excitement about the dust collecting capabilities of the Capex. I found that using it with the 27 millimeter holes, I would describe the dust collection as okay. Dust will escape, it does collect, it does make a mess on the floor, uh, you do need to clean up. With the 36 millimeter holes, however, that problem goes away and dust, dust collection is far superior. So when you're buying this, and if you're using it with the, with the Festool um, CT range of hoovers, put some money on one side and upgrade to the 36 millimeter holes, and that's gonna give you the dust collection that everybody raves around. With the standard 27 millimeter holes, you're gonna be somewhat disappointed, I think. Now the capex saw also comes with what's known as a trenching feature, and that's really good when you're cutting dados or if you're cutting um, tenons and so on and so forth. And if you look at the, in normal use, the depth of plunge goes all the way down, and that's what you'd expect because you're cutting through a piece of material. This green knob alters the functionality. Pushing that knob forward limits the depth of cut. So you can see that that now will not go down any further. Rotating this knob in one direction will raise up the blade and therefore changing the position that it stops at. And as you'd expect, in the other direction allows you to lower that blade. So we can now use that to set a certain cut and therefore we can use that to actually cut out dados or, or tenons. And that's a really, really useful feature. And flicking it back out of the way then takes it back to its normal depth of cut.
Out of the box, the plunge is limited to 88 millimeters. And the thing that's limiting the cut is a distance from the blade to this arbor, the outer edge of the arbor. That's your 88 millimeters. Any more than that, then obviously it fouls on the wood. But the Capex has got a trick up its sleeve. This can lock into a position where you're actually cutting on this part of the blade, thereby ignoring that. And that gives you a depth of cut as 120 millimeters. There's a green knob here that you push forward, and that's just dropping down a metal string at the back that just locks into place. And with that locked into place, my cut line here is now using this wider part of the blade in 120 millimeters. So where that's useful is when you're doing mitre cuts on skirting boards or deep architrave, or anything that you want to put up in this position. And that allows you to actually make a much deeper depth of cut. And 120 millimeters really does allow you to get some deep cuts inside there. So that's a little feature that's really quite useful. To release it, there's a little green button here. That springs back into place and then you're back to normal settings. I mentioned earlier on the compound angle finder and that's quite simple. You just open that up, position it against the angle that you want to find and lock it into position using the green knob. You then take this and you rest it against the outside of your cutting edge, your, your cutting fence. Then using your lasers that we've now calibrated, we set the line up on the marking edge to the center of the lasers lock that down and now that will make a cut that will give us a perfectly mitered joint that reflects that angle and that will also work for internal corners but it will also by sliding the post forward will use for external corners as well so I can find the angle lock it down slide these out of the way and then I can use that to set up the the mitre cut that we need so that's a really useful feature Especially if you're doing finishing work where you want to quickly cut architrave or skirting boards or mouldings and so on and so forth. The final thing to say is this all locks away nicely for storage. We slide the head back and I'll show you. And there's a knob here and that knob tightens down, stops this sliding backwards and forwards. And there's a green position here that when it's pushed in, it stops the head moving. So for storage, put it in one of the locations, release the knob, slide it all the way back, making sure that you're unplugged. Plunge that down so the blade's inside there, push that knob forward and that's it. Now that's now stored away safely. So storing it and transporting it into that position obviously helps with your, your calibration. It stops the bevel alignment being knocked out and it stops the mitre alignment being knocked out as well. There's a handy storage area at the back for the cable and that just simply, oops a daisy, and that simply wraps around at the back and keeps the cable out of the way for transportation and storage. And then there's a position in the back where you can just put your five millimeter Allen key so it's always ready for use. I say no storage position for the two and a half millimeter key. So either get yourself a set where you store it well or make sure you look after that key. And that's pretty much it for the Capex. I hope you found that useful. Say I'll do a video down the line where we start to look at using it for joinery work, dados, tenons, mitres and compound angle cuts and so on and so forth. Um, but for now, Thanks for watching, see you soon.